In this lesson, we're going to cover increasing and decreasing, concavity, points of inflection, and first and second derivative tests. The increasing decreasing test says, let f be continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b. If f prime of x is greater than zero or positive on an interval, then f is increasing on that interval. If f prime of x is less than zero or negative on an interval, then f is decreasing on that interval. For this diagram, I drew a tangent line between a and b. I drew a tangent line also between b and c, and then again between c and d. You can see right here that this tangent line is positive. So we have f prime of x is greater than zero. For this next one, we have f prime of x is less than zero or negative. And for this last one, f prime of x is positive. Again, when f prime of x is positive, that means the graph is increasing. And where f prime of x is negative, that's where the graph is decreasing. This example says f of x equals x cubed plus x squared minus 5x minus 5. Part A says find the intervals on which f is increasing and the intervals on which f is decreasing. So first we're going to take the derivative of f. We get 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. We're going to set this equal to 0 to find the critical values of f. When we solve we get x equals negative 5 thirds and positive 1 and those are going to be our only critical values. Because again, the other way you check for critical values is you check the derivative not existing, and this exists for all real numbers. So here we set up a number line for f prime. I wrote down our critical values, and we're going to test numbers in between them. So we'll test a number to the right of 1, we'll test a number in between, negative 5 thirds and 1, and then we'll test a number to the left of negative 5 thirds. So we're going to plug in negative 2 and then make sure when you plug it in, you're plugging it into f prime. So when you plug in negative 2, you can plug it up here or you can plug it in right here. Sometimes this is a little bit easier. And again, when you plug in negative 2 for x into f prime, you end up getting positive 3. So I'm going to put a plus right here and then I'm going to draw an arrow that has positive slope just to kind of visually show that since f prime is positive in this interval, that means that f is going to be increasing. When you plug in 0 for x, you get negative 5. So in this interval, f prime is negative. And again, I'm going to draw an arrow going down so that we can visually see that f is decreasing in this interval. And then finally, when you plug in 2 for x, you get positive 11. So we're going to draw that up arrow. So the graph of f is increasing where f prime is positive. So you can see f prime is positive from negative infinity up to negative 5 thirds, and f prime is also positive from 1 to infinity. f is decreasing from negative 5 thirds to positive 1. So I just wrote the interval out as negative 5 thirds to positive 1, and again that's because that's where f prime is negative. For part b, we want to sketch the graph of f. So to do so, we're going to find the x-intercepts, and then we're going to find the y-intercept and then we'll use the information from above to finish graphing. To find the x-intercept, we plug in 0 for y. There's four terms we're going to factor by grouping. So you factor out the GCF, or the greatest common factor, of these first two terms. You get x squared, and it leaves x plus 1. Over here, we factor out negative 5. That's our GCF, and we're left with x plus 1. So we bring the common factor of x plus 1 to the front, and then we leave the quantity x squared minus 5 at the end. And then finally, this is not a difference of squares, but we're going to factor it, and we're going to go x, x, and then root 5 times root 5 gives you this 5 right here. And because it is a difference of two terms, we're going to go 1 plus 1 minus. When you set all of these equal to 0 and solve, you end up getting... The x-intercepts negative 1 and then plus or minus root 5. Our y-intercept we're going to plug in 0 for x and you get negative 5. We have our x-intercepts here so I plot in negative 1 and then we have our positive root 5 and negative root 5. And then also our y-intercept is negative 5 so I went down to negative 5. One more thing, our leading coefficient for this polynomial is positive so that means to the right the graph is going to go up. So we're going to go to the rightmost dot right here, and from there we're going to go up. Notice it says f is increasing from negative infinity to negative 5 thirds, and also from 1 to infinity. So I tried to draw it so that at 1 the graph starts increasing. And again, negative 5 thirds is the same as negative 1 and 2 thirds. So I just want to look right here. If you go to negative 1 and 2 thirds, that's where the graph kind of switches. So from negative 1 and 2 thirds to positive 1, the graph is decreasing. And again, if we go back to right here, we have negative infinity all the way to negative 5 thirds or negative 1 and 2 thirds. The graph is increasing. All right, so there's our graph. Next, we have the first derivative test. 
It says, let C be a critical number of a continuous function f. If f prime changes from positive to negative at C, then f has a local maximum at C. If f prime changes from negative to positive at C, then f has a local minimum at C. If f prime is positive to both the left and right of C, or negative to both the left and right of C, then f has neither a local maximum nor a local minimum at C. So here's a few diagrams. For our first diagram, we have f prime is positive, and then it changes to f prime is negative. Since f prime changes from positive to negative at C, we say that f has a local max at C. For this diagram, f prime is changing from negative to positive at C, therefore f has a local minimum at C. Right here we have f prime is positive to the left of C and f prime is positive also to the right of C. So we have no max or min at C. Same thing here, to the left of C we have a negative slope, we have f prime is negative. To the right of C, f prime is also negative. So since they're both negative, we don't have a sign change for f prime, therefore f does not have a max or min at C. This example says the graph of f prime is given below. On what intervals is f increasing or decreasing? And at what values of x does f have a local maximum or minimum? So again, this is going to be f prime. So first I want to emphasize that right here, f prime is above the x-axis. Here, f prime is below the x-axis. Here, f prime is above the x-axis. And here, f prime is below the x-axis. So we have positive and negative, negative and positive and then positive and negative. We have f is increasing, f is decreasing. Remember, f is increasing where f prime is positive. So f prime is positive in this interval right here and also in this interval over here. So again, f is increasing where f prime is positive, so that occurs from zero to one and also from five to seven. So I have that written out over here. We have f is decreasing where f prime is negative, so that occurs right here from one to five. Since f prime changes from positive to negative at 1 and 7, we have f has a local max at those values. And finally, f prime changes from negative to positive at 5, therefore f has a local minimum at x equals 5. This example says find the local maximum and minimum of g of x, which equals x plus 2 sine x, and then it gives us a condition that x is an element of the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So we take the derivative of g and we get 1 plus 2 cosine x. So to find our critical values, first we check to see if there's anywhere where this doesn't exist. And since it's cosine of x, that won't produce any critical values. So next we're going to take it and set it equal to 0 and solve. So we get 2 thirds pi and 4 thirds pi. So now we're going to make our sign chart for g prime. We have 2 thirds pi and 4 thirds pi, and we're going to check values in between them to test for positive and negative of g prime. Just a reminder, I chose pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2. We're plugging those values in for g prime. When you plug in pi over 2 right here, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so you just get 1. When you plug in pi, cosine of pi is negative 1, so this makes negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And 3 halves pi, when you plug that in right here, you get 0, so you just get positive 1. So now you can see g prime changes from positive to negative at 2 thirds pi, so therefore g will have a local maximum at 2 thirds pi. Right here you have g prime changing from negative to positive at 4 thirds pi, therefore g will have a local minimum at 4 thirds pi. So I wrote that out, since g prime changes from positive to negative at 2 thirds pi, g has a local max there. And it says to find the local maximum. So that means we're going to plug this back into the original function to find the maximum value, which is a y value. And right here, sine of 2 thirds pi, if we look at this diagram, sine of this angle is going to be this side, which is root 3 over 2. So our local maximum value is going to be 2 pi over 3 plus root 3. And then I wrote out, since g prime changes from negative to positive at 4 thirds pi, g has a local minimum there. And finally, we're going to take 4 thirds pi and we're going to plug it into the original function to find the minimum value. So sine of 4 thirds pi is going to be right here, and you can see that it's this length and it's negative root 3 over 2. So our minimum value is going to be 4 thirds pi minus root 3. Next, we're going to talk about concavity. It says let f be a differentiable function, then f is concave up, and we have the condition that f prime is increasing and f double prime is positive. It also says the graph of f is above the tangent line to f on an interval when f is concave up. For concave down, 
we have f prime is decreasing and we have f double prime is negative and the graph of f is below the tangent line to f on an interval for concave down. So here's an example of a graph that's concave up. We have this curve right here. If you look at the slopes of the tangent lines, as you go from left to right, you can see that they're increasing. So that's why f prime is increasing for concave up. Next, it says the graph of f is above the tangent line. So you can see here's the graph of f, and it's above the tangent line. And again, that's a characteristic for f being concave up. So here's an example of f being concave down. As you go from left to right, you can see the slopes of the tangent lines are decreasing. So that's the f prime is decreasing for concave down. Then you also have the graph of f is below the tangent line. So you can see here's the graph of f, and you have your tangent lines where f is below those tangent lines. So here we have a diagram. We have our curve going like this, and we just want to note from a to b, from b to c, and c to d, and so on. We want to note, is this curve concave up or concave down? So from a to b, if you drew a tangent line, the curve lies below the tangent line. Also, it's kind of like a frown, concave down. So again, from A to B, the curve is concave down. From B to C, the curve is concave up. And again, I kind of say like concave up like a cup, concave down like a frown. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know if that helps. Right here, it's not so obvious, but this is gonna be concave down. Here, it's concave up. And here, it's also concave up. And finally, from P to Q, it's concave down. We have a concavity test. It says if F double prime is positive for all X in an interval I, then the graph of F is concave up on that interval. If f double prime is negative for all x in the interval i, then the graph of f is concave down on that interval. This definition says a point p on the graph of f is called an inflection point, or an ip, if f is continuous there and the graph changes from concave up to concave down, or it changes from concave down to concave up at that point p. So going back to this diagram, we have a change from concave down to concave up. So this right here is an inflection point. Similarly, here's also an inflection point. This, by definition, is an inflection point. This is not because we're concave up, concave up. So this is not an inflection point. We would call that a cusp. And then right here, this is also an inflection point. All right, so all of those are the inflection points. This example says, given f of x, which equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 1, find the intervals of concavity and points of inflection. So first, we're going to take the first derivative of f, and next, we're going to take the second derivative of f. When you get the second derivative, we're going to set it equal to 0 and solve. So we get 2 thirds as our critical number, and now we're going to put that on our sign chart. So be sure to label your sign chart f double prime. Our critical value is 2 thirds, and then we're going to plug in 0 and 1 both to f double prime. When we plug in 0, we get negative 4. Since this represents concavity, I put a negative and then drew a concave down curve. When we plug in 1, we get positive 2. And again, I put a plus and then drew a concave up curve. Again, f is concave up where f double prime is positive. So f is concave up on the interval from 2 thirds to infinity. When f double prime is negative, f is concave down. So our interval is negative infinity to 2 thirds. Finally, we want points of inflection, and that's where f double prime changes from negative to positive because that's where f changes from concave down to concave up. And to find your point of inflection, you're going to take 2 thirds and plug it into the original function. So we get this, I'm going to make a common denominator of 27, and we get 29 over 27. So our point of inflection is going to be 2 thirds comma 29 over 27. This example says sketch a possible graph of a function f satisfying the following. So first we have f of 0 is 0, we have f of 2 is 3, and we have f of 4 is 6. Right here we have f prime of 0 equals f prime of 4, which equals 0. So that means we're going to have a horizontal tangent line at 0 and 4. Next we have f prime is greater than 0 or positive from 0 to 4, so that means f is increasing. Here we have f prime is negative from less than 0 or greater than 4, so that's going to be where f is decreasing. Next we have f double prime is positive for less than 2, so that's going to be where f is concave up. And f double prime is negative for greater than 2, so that's going to be where f is concave down. Okay, so let's just make sure this satisfies all these conditions. This was going to be a horizontal tangent line at 0 and 4, so that works horizontal tangent line here and here. We have f is increasing from 0 to 4, so from 0 all the way 4, f is increasing, so that works. f is decreasing less than 0, so that's correct, and greater than 4, also decreasing. Finally, concave up for less than 2, so here's 2, this is concave up, so that works, and then f is concave down greater than 2. Perfect. So there's our final graph.
So this is the second derivative test. Again, when you're applying the second derivative test, first you take the derivative of f set equal to zero and solve for c. Then you take the second derivative of f and you plug c in and you test whether or not it's positive or negative. If it's positive, then f is concave up, indicating that f has a local minimum there. If f double prime is negative, then the graph is concave down, indicating that f has a local maximum there. This example says given f of x, which equals 12 plus 2x squared minus x to the fourth, part a, we want to find the local minimum and maximum of f, and we're going to do so using the second derivative test. So for f prime, we get 4x minus 4x cubed. We set it equal to 0 and we solve. I'm going to factor out 4x, and then we're going to factor this further. This is a difference of squares, so it's going to factor 1 plus x and 1 minus x. And we end up getting 0, negative 1, and 1 for our critical values. So this is the first condition of the second derivative test. We found where the derivative is equal to 0. So now we're going to take all of these values and we're going to plug them into the second derivative of f to indicate whether f is concave up or down at each of these values and then conclude whether or not f has a local min or max at each of these values. So the second derivative is going to be 4 minus 12x squared, and I'm going to set this up as a chart. So we're going to plug in negative 1, 0, and 1, and again we're plugging these into f double prime. Okay, I'm just going to continue my chart over here. Since we got f double prime was negative, that's going to be concave down. f double prime was positive, so we get concave up. And again, this is going to be concave down. Since the problem wants us to find the max and min, we're going to take these x values and plug them into the original function. And when you plug these into the original function, you get 13, 12, and 13. These are going to be the maxes, and this is the min. Part B says verify the answers we got by graphing f on a calculator, and be sure to use an appropriate viewing window. And you can see the graph has a max at negative 1 and also at positive 1 and a local minimum at 0. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching!